Welcome everyone to a new video. In the uh, previous TA related educational videos, I took you through some basic beginnings of trading and investing, such as how to survive a bear market and basic indicators. Starting today, we're going to go in depth. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how I create my own investment thesis around networking. One of the parts was on-chain data, where we looked at current valuations and market sentiment, for example. In today's video, I give you an update on the current on-chain data of the market. We zoom in on valuations and look at what's missing for the start of another bull run. Before I forget, if you like what we do, our trade letter and recently added premium membership can be tested for one week for free. The links in the description gives you all the information you need to join for free. Finally, if you are liking the content, Please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and if you like the video, please hit like if you enjoy the content. We will start this video with an explanation of what on-chain data actually means. I've explained it a few times on my channel, but for the new viewers, a quick recap. On-chain data is about the underlying market data. The fact is that price movements paint only a limited picture about everything that's actually happening in the market. On-chain data is therefore seen as the back-end data and price movements the front-end data. As I said, these different data points are part of my investment thesis. We distinguish network adoption, health, valuation, but also much deeper such as distinction between newer and older coins, time lapse and average cost. Not every data point is important, so today I'll run through a few that paint a good picture of the current state of the market. Before we dive into the depths to show uh, how far along we are in the current bear market, here are a few charts you always want to keep an eye on to see if the networks are healthy and adoption continues to increase. For today's examples, we'll also just zoom in again on Bitcoin and ETH, the most mature networks. First, network adoption. For this, we'll use the chart which is Bitcoin number of addresses with a non-zero balance. In the chart behind me, you can see the following. The black line is the Bitcoin price. The orange line is the number of users with more than zero Bitcoin on their address. With network adoption, you want to see the orange line regardless of price increase. This keeps buyers believing more and more in the long-term goal around Bitcoin and thus more and more users are joining the market. Normally around bear market periods, we would see a lot of people leaving, but so far in 2021 and 2022, that has hardly happened. A sign of strength and conviction. For Ethereum, it looks like this. The same strong increase in uses as we can see. Now that we have tackled the network adoption globally, let's look at a few standard network valuation models. This is about the current valuation of the market relative to previous data points. We use the following models. This is the MVRVC score and it's used to assess when Bitcoin is overall undervalued relative to its fair value. When the market value is significantly higher than the realized value, this historically indicates a market top, while the opposite indicates a market bottom and is marked green. As you can see very clearly in the image, we are in a dip of undervalued territory. We also have the Pew multiple. For example, the Pew multiple, where we look at the fundamentals of minus profitability. As you know, the minus are the security aspect of a proof of work chain. Currently, a very low profitability for the minus, similar to prior lows of bear markets, an undervaluation of the network. And so there are many more data points that indicate the same situation, undervaluation to extreme undervaluation. Now we dive into the depths. In this part of the video, we are going to look at the current state of the market, starting with the trend. In the image next to me, you can see the Bitcoin accumulation trend score. It can be used to understand the spending behavior of participants and can help put the market reaction to price action in context. Markets think in phases, accumulation and distribution. Accumulation is the collection and investment in coins. Distribution is the selling off of the coins. These are often ways in which the more sophisticated investor can sell their accumulated bags to retail investors and realize profits. As you can see, we are in the distribution phase where the previously accumulated positions combined with retail hype around 24k in a potential bull market is used as exit liquidity and profit taking. 
where you can see that if we zoom in further on the actual market participants, for example, and particularly whales with more than 10k Bitcoin sold around the range high. Retailers are stuck in a whales gain. Zooming out further, shifting from micro to macro, we see that the Bitcoin liveliness is in a strong downtrend. This suggests that many more coins are being accumulated than destroyed, which is a period of accumulation. The time horizon is therefore essential as an investor. With the bridge of the time horizon, we can now look at the difference between long-term and short-term holders. The rule is as follows. Coins held for less than 155 days are short-term holders and holding for more than 155 days are long-term holders. What we see in the Bitcoin chart is the total supply held by long-term holders is that the number of long-term holders is increasing. On the one hand, this has to do with the fact that people started to scale during the weakness around April, which now become long-term holders as they don't really want to sell in a loss. But also because in the Bitcoin net realized profit loss, you can see that people are still selling around break even prices. These are mainly short term holders who after a period of dollar cost averaging can break even at any Bitcoin price rise and therefore exit the market. A bull market can only start when the break even sentiment changes. This is represented by the A super indicator where investors above one, which is the black line, change from sell the rally to buy the dip. With the above data points, we have already been able to analyze then the market sentiment is determined by short-term holders exiting the market, while the conviction of the long-term holders keeps growing. Also, the network effects are increasing, which play out in the long term, and we see an undervalued but healthy system. For the final part, we zoom in on the ETH merge and what important aspects come into play here. Looking at the four week old data, we see a few interesting things in the chart. For the first time in history, we have more options open interest on ETH than on Bitcoin. With much volume higher or much higher than the current price, we have a very strong bullish bias towards Ethereum. But as you see in this data, spot demand lagged, where you see that only 700 million per month was taken from the exchanges. This means that traders are positioning themselves on a buy the rumor sell the news event via the depth of derivatives markets. Whereas such large catalysts are often a buy the rumor sell the news event, you have to remember that so much fundamentally changes that structural flows and supply demand change over time. The day may be a sell event, but long term ETH has never been more bullish. Let's get towards the conclusion of this video. We've come to the end of this on-chain update. I hope you have learned the first steps towards the on-chain metrics and the various data points of the market for deeper insights. On-chain data is something relatively new and hard to digest, but the more time you put into this, the more information you can get out of it, which makes you even more relaxed during investing and trading in the cryptocurrency market. One of the deepest insights you could have been getting out of this video is the eat merch and how you can protect yourself and seek exposure for the longer term. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and remember, don't do stupid shit and stay calm. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.